On this episode of What's Going On With Shipping, container volumes drop. I'm your host, Al Mercagliano. Welcome to this episode. So a couple of days ago, I did a video on container rates dropping. And now I want to do one on container volumes because there is a plethora of information out there from competing news sources that are going back and forth about container volumes dropping. And it all has to do with the fact that the Port of Los Angeles just reported their September numbers. And it's the worst September numbers in years. You got to go back to 2016 before their imports were this low. And so... The problem has been that L.A. has been the bellwether for everything. I did another video way back when that made the argument is why is L.A. and Long Beach basically dictating national maritime policy? And I think a lot of people are reading into L.A. that their precipitous fall is an indicator about where the U.S. economy is, where imports are, and what this all means. But the problem is this. There's a lot of other factors at play here, and I don't think you can look at just L.A. to make your determination. So we're going to go ahead and examine this and break this down. Before we do so, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. All right, let's go ahead and jump into this topic. So this is a story I used a few times, a Mike Schuller story from G Captain back in October 11th. U.S. import volumes head south in September, but still above pre-pandemic levels and the basis for mike's argument is a report that came out of a data analytics company called descartes and this chart has been used repeatedly across the board to talk about the precipitous fall of container import volumes into the united states the blue line is 2019 numbers so bouncing around 1 million TEUs here. Then you get the red is 2020. You had that precipitous drop because of COVID. All of a sudden, import rates fell. And then all of a sudden, starting in the summer, it went through the roof. And then since the summer of 2020, all the way to the summer of 2022, we're banging along here between 2.3 and 2.5 million TEUs. A TEU is a 20-foot equivalent unit. This is the measurement for containers. Now, all of a sudden, this volume is dropping. And everybody's reading into this, especially with the report that just came out of L.A. about their volumes. We're going to come to that in a second. That this means that U.S. imports are falling and this is a bad indicator. But I just want to take a moment here and, and go through some of the data here because I think it's really important. Number one, before August of this year, we were at record import levels. The first half of 2022 was record import levels. If you add up these monthly levels right here, you come to roughly, and I did have a rough calculation, about 22 million TEUs. This is a report from the National Retail Federation. This shows retail imports from 2004 to 2021 in millions of TEUs. So again, we are right around now at about 21 million TEUs. That's with the September numbers. So we still have a third, a quarter of the year left. We still got Q4 left. Well, 22 million containers puts us at the level we were at in 2020. Highest has been 25.8 million. So realize we are in for the second best year in terms of imports. The question is, where do we hit? Will we hit 25 million? Maybe not because of the way the numbers are coming down, but we're going to be at the second best year we've ever been in, but we are coming down off there. So I think number one, it's important to say that we've had a huge year coming in here. All right, let's look at the port. So Port of LA. So Mike Schuller's story, and I'm going to use Mike's uh, stories here from GCAP and just for continuity here purposes. Port of Los Angeles takes a beating. So I watched the report by Gene Soroka today, the monthly report, uh, where they had it. And let me be clear. Gene, if you ever watch Gene's reports, they're great. Gene can give you good news, bad news, and you think it's all the best. It, it, it's fantastic. He's just able to do it. So Port of L.A. handled 709,873 TUs in September 22 for a whopping 21.5% decline from September of last year. Imports, in particular, have fallen off a clip. September's loaded imports came in at 343,462 TUs, a 27% drop compared to the same month last year, and 20% below the five-year average. That is significant. 20% below the five-year average. Last month's imports were the lowest of any month since May of 2020 at the outset 
of COVID-19. In fact, September 2022 is, marks the worst September for imports, dating all the way back to 2009. So you got to go back quite a few years here. You go back 13 years. Obviously, the Port of LA has had a terrible month in September. And you go on here, and this is his quotes. And again, Gene can make anything sound great. This is his quote. Despite what will likely be a soft ending to 2022, we are on track to have the second best year in our history. More importantly, the cargo backlog that began last year has been nearly eliminated due to the diligent combined efforts of our supply chain partners. All right, I'm going to take exception with two things that Gene just said there. Number one, he's exactly right. This is their second best year. There's going to be a great year for the port of LA, even though their September is looking bad, even though the numbers have plummeted, they're looking good. However, I take exception with his last statement there. So this is the infamous uh, import container dwell time chart that they started tracking back in October of 2021, way back when it was over 90,000 containers. It dropped down uh, till uh, late 2021 into 2022, and then it started creeping back up again. And this had to do with the record number of containers coming over in the first half of 2022. And then in the summer of 2022, it starts declining. And it's been declining ever since then. And now it is probably at, if not its lowest, close to its lowest it's been. They've been able to clear 58% of the container. So when Gene says they're clearing containers, they have. Uh, that means that shippers have been coming in, getting their containers, and clearing them off the terminal. However, that's not the same with the empties. As a matter of fact, what we're seeing here is an uptick in the number of empties clogging up the yard in LA, which makes you ask the question, Sal, how can that be? How is it that empties are piling up? And it's very simple. And I think it's the root cause for why LA numbers are going down. There's less ships calling at the port. And if there's less ships coming into the port, there are less ships to take the empties out of this port. And that's what that indicates to me, because ships are avoiding the port of Los Angeles. I don't think container numbers are dropping and falling off a cliff as much as people think. I think it has to do with the port of L.A. And the fact that the port of L.A. has done a lot to drive away shippers to go to other places. All right. What's my proof on that? Let's talk about that for a second. So, other story here by Mike Schiller. Port of Long Beach, imports fall in September. Well, that's not a good showing, Sal. If uh, L.A. is falling, we've got Long Beach falling here. Dock workers and terminal operators moved 741,823 TEUs of cargo containers last month. However, that's only down 0.9% from September of 2021. That is is significant. Oh, by the way, 741,000 TEUs come back over here to the port of Los Angeles. How many containers did the port of Los Angeles move? 709,000. Long Beach has beat LA in the number of containers it moves. And understand, Long Beach is a much more well-rounded port. They do bunkering, they do bulk material, they do car carriers. LA doesn't do that. LA does passenger ships and they do container ships. That's it. And now Long Beach has surpassed L.A. That is significant for a variety of reasons. Number one, the rail has improved in Long Beach. The LBCT terminal, LBCT, sorry, it's a little hard to say, terminal is much faster, automated, does a lot more work than the terminals over in L.A. Long Beach is just all around in a much better position. And if you read the comment here from Mario uh, Cadero, who's the, the Long Beach executive director and former head of the Federal Maritime Commission, consumers and retailers are concerned about inflation, leading to warehouses filled with inventory and fewer product orders from Asia. The respite is leading to increased capacity on the docks and fewer ships waiting off the coast to enter the port. The number of ships off the port of LA and Long Beach is, is just a handful now, nowhere near to where we were. However, I think Mario and Gene in Long Beach and L.A. are masking the big issue. And that is that shippers are avoiding not just L.A. and Long Beach, but Oakland, Seattle, Tacoma, the entire West Coast. All right, Sal, big statement. Let's see your facts behind it. All right, let's go on over here. Uh, Port of Houston, container volume, say strong in September. So you got to look at the four corners. You got to look at the port of L.A. and Long Beach. You got to look at Houston. You got to look at Savannah. And you got to look at New York, New Jersey. Now, New York, New Jersey, we don't have the numbers in yet. But I'm expecting to see strong numbers come in from New York, New Jersey. We do have the numbers for Houston 
and Savannah. And what we're seeing in Houston right now is strong numbers. Port of Houston last month moved 353,525 TUs for a whopping 26% increase over the previous year. The quote here from the Port of Houston, the increase in volume is largely due to demand for imported goods and a more genuine, a more efficient gateway. And loaded import container volume was up 31% in September over the same month last year. Overall, container volume is up 18% year to date at Port Houston's terminals and is nearing the 3 million mark already this year. Gateway, that is the key. If you get your containers in the, into LA and Long Beach, you still gotta get them out of LA and Long Beach. Two thirds of them are using rail. Class one railways are in a mess. You still have labor renegotiation going on there. The union strike, which was averted, may come back on because some unions aren't agreeing to the agreement. You had the uh, stealing of goods in the Alameda corridor. Not to mention the fact that, you know, the vast majority, 80 percent of the population of the United States is east of a line from Texas to North Dakota. So it's it makes the most sense for shippers to take advantage of the new lane in the Panama Canal, the Neo Panamax lane, and to use those ultra large container ships going from Asia to Europe via the Suez Canal and ship. That's why that rate going to the East Coast and Gulf Coast of the United States is staying so high. And the rate from Asia to the West Coast of the United States is dropping to pre COVID levels because this cargo is shifting and the NRF, the National Retail F Foundation, for their July numbers confirm that. Only 49% of the containers went into the West Coast, 51% went to East and Gulf Coast. Go on here, Port of Savannah. Now, Port of Savannah report was interesting because this says Port of Savannah sees signs of correction. Cargo volumes through the Port of Savannah tumbled more than 7% in September, in part due to impacts related to Hurricane Ian. I think that's the key. Hurricane Ian closed the port for a few days. Uh, even so, the port closed out the quarter, handling nearly 10% more cargo than it did a year ago. A high number of ad hoc vessel calls, in addition of three new Mediterranean services and one new service to Asia, contributed to the growth. The Georgia Port Authorities handled more than 1.5 million TEUs in the first quarter. Savannah handled 700, 776,000 TEUs loaded empties in the first quarter, while import trade totaled 766,000. I think Savannah is a key. But the other issue here between Houston, New York, New Jersey, and Savannah is there are ships anchored off the port waiting to get in. That's not the case on the West Coast. Let's fire up our old buddy uh, Marine Traffic. And what you see here is container ships sitting off the port of Houston right now. And you can see them right here, all sitting here waiting to get into the port of Houston. Just a, a long line of uh, container ships right here. Ships anchored off the southern shore of Long Island waiting to get in. You can see them right here, all waiting to get in. So, And again, this is unusual for New York, New Jersey. You don't typically see ships anchored off New York, New Jersey waiting to get in. But the one that's the killer here is come on down the coast. And what you see off Savannah here is just a huge amount of vessels all waiting to get in here. And really kind of confirms that report for us that we're still seeing some large container volumes coming in away from L.A. and Long Beach over to the east and Gulf Coast. Last thing I want to show you is the actual report from Descartes. This is what a lot of people are basing their analysis on, but I figured I'd take you right to the report so you can see it right here. So September U.S. container import volume drops, but delays at East and Gulf Coast ports remain high. Uh, the report goes on. U.S. container import volumes in September moved closer to pre-pandemic levels, but the volume decrease did not have a measurable impact on port delays, especially on the East and Gulf Coast. A number of factors such as a slowing economy, retailers reducing purchases, inflation, and high fuel costs are finally making an impact on U.S. container imports as September volume was a significant adjustment from August and September 2021. Much of the drop was related to a decrease in Chinese imports. We're seeing shutdowns in the ports of Ningbao right now, for example, which has the greatest impact on the two major West Coast ports. The September update of logistics metrics Descartes is tracking shows the potential for relief, but continues to point to congested and challenging global supply chain performance for the rest of 2022. We'll show you a couple of quick charts real quick. This is the difference from August to September 
this year in terms of TEU loss. Notice both LA and Long Beach down about 17%, whereas New York, New Jersey down 2.3. Savannah, a significant drop, 21%. But again, I think a lot of that has to do with Hurricane Ian shutting the port for a few days. Charleston, Norfolk uh, down, but Houston only down 5%, but big. I mean, it's all double digits, basically, especially on the West Coast. You're seeing in Tacoma and in Oakland. Same thing for exports coming out of the countries. The big loss right here is China. We're seeing over 183,000 less containers coming out of China, 18.3% loss. This is the chart that I, I'm surprised that more people haven't put in any of their reports. I, I had to go to Dick Carr to get this one. This is the top 10 ports volume shift from May, September 2021 versus May, September 2022. And so here you are looking over the period of a few months. And what you notice is the negatives are all West Coast ports. Tacoma, Seattle, Oakland, Long Beach, Los Angeles. All of them are on the West Coast. Where you saw gains, Charleston, Houston, Norfolk, Savannah, New York, New Jersey, all East Gulf Coast ports. I think that's the significant issue. That is the significant issue. Containers are traveling longer distances because of the increased reliability. And more important, they know they're getting in the hands of their consumers in a set period of time, something that cannot be guaranteed coming in from the West Coast. Finally, I want to show you this last section here. This is the issue that Descartes wraps, on, wraps up on here. And they hit some key things. Labor situation remains unchanged and presents continued risk to port operations. The ILWU contract expired on July 1st. However, business has proceeded as usual with the union working with management. But again, it causes risk. And there's always the potential for a strike. There have been no impact on container processing as been the case in the past. California law AB5, this is impacting Oakland, LA, and Long Beach, still remains a significant issue with no resolution in sight. And there is a risk that more AB5 related stoppages could occur. Uh, the labor uncertainty could be a significant reason why import volumes are not shifting back to major California ports. I would add to it fact, again, that in 2023, new emission standards go into a, in place that affect the number of drayage trucks that can go in and out of the ports. Plus, you have the ports talking about green corridors now between the U.S. and China on emissions for vessels. Finally, while key economic indicators are pointing to a softening economy, they are not all aligned. Despite gross domestic products shrinking for the second quarter in a row, the U.S. economy remains relatively strong. October jobs report was strong with 260,000 more jobs. That's 3.5% more than was anticipated. According to the U.S. Energy Information Association, the EIA, my favorite, this week in petroleum people, a significant contributor to high inflation costs dropped only slightly in September, but diesel declined 28 cents to $4.84. Now, again, fuel costs are going to be the big driver of inflation right now. Previously, it was transportation costs. Now we're seeing fuel being that. Both are still high and likely to remain elevated for the foreseeable future given the disruption of global energy markets as a result of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Subsequent sanctions on Russia and recent steps by OPEC to curtail production, uh, uh, the 2 million uh, barrels per day they stopped, are impacting everything. So what does this all mean? Well, it all means that, number one, that we're still seeing a record year for 2021 in terms of imports. I mean, we're going to be second only to 2022 so far. I mean, 2022 is going to be a record year compared to 2021. Sorry. The issue with falling imports, again, is largely located on the West Coast right now. And I think that is significant. I think it's significant. we got to be looking at what is unique on the West Coast. And obviously, the most unique things on the West Coast are the labor negotiations, AB5 in California, rail issues, and emissions issues. All of that is driving up issues and forcing shippers to put their cargo on ships that are going to the East and Gulf Coast. Now, come the end of this year, the question is the reset, and we go into 2023, what do we expect to see? Will 2023 be a record year like 2021 or 2022? Who knows? We don't know yet. Where you're gonna start seeing that issue really come to bear is in the second quarter, when we usually see, uh, you know, what's the market going to look like here? Again, we're going to have some dry periods with Chinese New Year, uh, the right post-holiday seasons. Things slow down in that first quarter. 
We're going to see some slowdowns. We always see them all the time. We're also having the issue with IMO 2023 coming into effect. I talked about this in a previous video where you have companies like Maersk. Soren Sku uh, is talking about the fact that I need 10 to 15% more capacity in my fleet because I got to slow down my ships because I got to meet these new fuel standards. And then you're going to have the mass scrapping of ships, ships that have not been scrapped for a long time. So you get all this new tonnage coming in. You've got these vessels that are going out to be scrapped. A lot of flux right now. But I think it's got to be careful. You just have to be careful using LA as the bellwether because I think Los Angeles had done themselves a bit of a disservice, shot himself in the foot a bit, and now they're trying to get back out of that, hence the plea a few months ago that I talked about with Gene Soroka asking for the cargo to come back to Los Angeles. I hope you enjoyed today's episode and the topic. If you have comments or things I missed, hey, throw it in the comments. Create that discussion in the comments below. I read my comments. I really appreciate everyone having a perspective. Am I right? Am I wrong? Who knows? But I am always looking for those, especially those in the industry who have some insight, drop a comment in there and let me know or drop me an email. If you did enjoy today's episode, hey, give it a like, leave a comment, share it across social media. If, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, what are you doing? Subscribe to the channel, hit the bell. I am striving to get this channel up to 100,000. I didn't think that was even a possibility. But over the past couple of months, we've been really kicking along here. Over 60,000 subscribers now. Really want to see the channel continue to take off and become a major factor in transportation policy. Leave that comment, subscribe and, and like, and most importantly all, if you can help us here at the channel, the way to do that is by hitting that super thanks button below or head on over to Patreon, become a patron of the page. We've got options available monthly, yearly, whatever you can do to help contribute to the page. That helps me keep this page up and running. So until the next episode, this is Sal signing off.